Are there Sophie, are you doing the um, tech support for this meeting? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. But I think it looks like I can share my screen and then Lynn will also need to share a screen, I assume. Great, sounds good. If there's any problems, I'll try to fix them. Awesome, thank you. So, hi everyone, welcome. We'll get started in a few minutes. Hi, everyone. How's everyone's days? How are everybody's days going? Such a gorgeous, gorgeous day outside in Eugene for anyone who's here. <laughs> up, up here in Portland too, it's just like sunny and amazing. I had to close the curtain actually so that hopefully you can see me better <laughs> and I can see the screen. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so heartbreaking to have to close the curtain for for Zoom when it's this gorgeous out, but I hear you. <laughs> Seriously. Hey, Carrie. Hi, Alex. How are you? Um, okay, trying to get my tech up and running. <clears throat> Looks like my ethernet's not functioning, so I'm on my iPad. Oh no. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not I ideal for seeing everybody. Like, I'm trying to see everybody. Yeah, that's tricky. Yeah, it's okay. Terry, do you know how many RSVQs we have for today by any chance? Do you know how many we should be expecting before we get started? I haven't heard from anyone that they couldn't make it, and I'm seeing most of them on. Mm -hmm. Great. Already. I don't see Lisa Fragola yet. Okay. Well, as um, seems appropriate in these Zoom days, I think we'll give it just a minute, a minute more for people yeah. to find the link and get situated. Great. Days of Zoom. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> I like your wood ceiling. Thank you. Mm. I like that it gets to feature in, in Zoom calls prominently. <laughs> I'll just right. let everybody know that Go ahead. This, is, sorry, Lynn. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. So we have a public link for folks to attend um, on our webpage and that will continue to be the case. And then we're going to record the meetings and post them online um, for viewing afterwards. Great. Okay, so with that, I got an email from Heather Selicki. She doesn't have the Zoom link. Okay. Um, you can give her the attendee link and I can promote her to panelist. I think that might be, just be the easiest. And then I don't see John Belcher um, or Lisa still. John, John's not coming. It's Carolyn Jacobs who's oh, here. So sorry. Carolyn. Oh, so sorry. Okay. John is on the other one next week. <laughs> okay, great. So 
we'll just wait one more minute then for that link to get sent. Sounds yeah. Good. Thank you. I'm wondering if Alex and I are the only ones with our cameras on or if folks aren't coming through for some reason. I see everybody's camera on except uh, Karen. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Karen. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna be able to see everybody, which is a bummer. No. I'm still trying to make it. Oh, there came Sophie and Carolyn. <laughs> Just slow. <laughs> A different device problem. Yeah, I know. I had to zoom on my on my phone the other day for the first time, and it's just it's so awkward when you don't have the space for everybody's faces. Yeah. Okay. So we're just waiting one more minute for our last um, member to receive the link and hop on and join us. It seemed like that's going through, Sophie. Yeah, I sent the email off to Heather's lucky. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's working on my computer. Sorry. Right, that was Heather, and I think she should be in here any second now. Excellent. Hi there. Is that Heather joining us? Yep, I made it. She's got my name. You can rename yourself. <laughs> Heather. She's another Terry Harding. <laughs> A twin Terry. Um, great, perfect. Well, welcome everybody. Um, welcome to the first steering committee meeting for the um, review panel partnership between the city of Eugene and Healthy Democracy. Really excited to have you here. Um, I'm probably a new face to many of you. So as I uh, said in my email, my name is Alex Ranieri and I'm working with uh, Healthy Democracy on some moderation and process design for this process. I've, I've worked with them a couple times in the past and, and love their work and um, I'm a, a Eugenian. So local and super excited to be bringing this process to uh, local government here. Um, so as you saw from my email, we have a pretty packed agenda today. Um, so bear with us as we try to kind of all get oriented and also dive into some process review at the end of this meeting. Um, so I'll just do a brief overview in case you didn't see the attachment in that email of what we'll, we'll cover today and then we'll jump right in. Um, so first we'll just do some introductions. Um, then our lovely city staff will give us a little overview of how the review panel fits into the larger public engagement process being kicked off by the city right now. Um, Lynn will talk to us a little bit about Healthy Democracy's work um, in the past and kind of some of the over um, or underlying principles that are guiding this project. Um, and then we'll, we'll do a little overview of the review panel itself um, and what this steering committee's role in that process is. Have a little bit of time for questions and discussion. Um, I will lead us in just you know, developing a few working agreements as a group, how we wanna to be together over the, the next handful of months. Um, and then Lynn will kind of dive deeper into the nuts and bolts of the process that we have down so far. And we're really hoping to spend at least kind of a third of this meeting getting all of your input on, um, on the, the nine sessions of the review panel in the fall um, in kind of a, 
a broad strokes way because ultimately it's it's your decision um, how that process gets laid out. Um, and then we'll just do a closing and, and kind of talk about scheduling. So we'll do our best to make it through. Um, <laughs> if our presenters don't mind, I can um, give some timing reminders to keep us on track, um, but just let me know if you need more time. Um, so first Alex, thing, um, we do have one more member, Lisa Fragla, who is not here. And I just sent the link to her in case she was having that same problem. So we should okay. proceed, but just know that Lisa might join us soon. Okay, that's great to know. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's just do a quick round of introductions. Um, we'll keep these pretty brief, but if you could just share with us your name and the organization or group that you're here representing, that would be great. Um, and I think it's a small enough group that we can probably just speak without, you know, calling, being called on or calling on each other. So let's see how that goes. Hi everyone, I'm Ed McMahon, Executive Director of the Home Builders Association of Lane County. Uh, Ken Beeson, I'm on the Eugene Planning Commission. I'm Heather Salicki, I'm on the Human Rights Commission. Carolyn Jacobs, I'm with Neighborhood, uh, Neighborhood Leaders Council. I'm Jennifer Ye. I'm a city councilor in Ward 4, which is Northeast Eugene. I'm Karen Knudsen. I'm an architect and urban designer and the founding director of Better Housing Together, which is a housing advocacy nonprofit here in Lane County. I'm Sophie McGinley. I'm an assistant planner with the City of Eugene Community Planning and Design Team, and I've been working on public engagement with the Middle Housing Project. And I'm Terry Harding. I'm the principal planner for community planning and design and also the project manager for our, the city of Eugene's implementation of House Bill 2001. I think that maybe just leaves me. I'm Lynn Davis, the program manager and principal process designer at Healthy Democracy. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Terry to kind of give us a rundown of how the review panel fits into the larger public engagement strategy um, by the city right now. Great. I'm going to keep this super brief because I believe you all received in your email invitation a description of the steering committee and the overall project for House Bill 2001, which we also call Middle Housing Code Amendments. Um, and a lot of our outreach materials we talk about adding more types of housing to more places across Eugene. Um, that's sort of the tagline for what the goal of the law and the goal of the project is. Um, so you heard that I'm serving as project manager and Sophie is our public involvement lead on the city side. We are here to support the steering committee as staff. We're not running this. We have um, contracted with Healthy Democracy to do that for us. So we're acting in a support role. And the other thing I would mention is that our website, the City of Eugene website on middle housing code amendments contains the approved public involvement plan that's guiding this work. And that was approved by council in, it was approved by planning commission in August and reviewed by council the previous month in July. So it includes their direction and comments. Um, lastly, we have other project information on the website, including a set of fact sheets. Thank you, Sophie, for sending the link in the chat. Um, and the fact sheets contain a lot of information. We're asking all of our different panels and groups to review them in advance of their first meetings. So we'll be sending those out to a variety of groups, including the Healthy Democracy panelists, once they're chosen. Great, thank you so much, Terry. Is there anything you wanted to add on that piece, Sophie? Thank you all for being here. Um, this is something new that we're piloting and it's really exciting and I'm very happy that you all are a part of it. Awesome, thanks. Um, perfect, so moving right along then, I'm gonna pass it over to Lynn who's gonna talk a little bit just about healthy democracy um, and its work and the principles that are um, again, informing and guiding all the work that they do and in this process as well. Thanks, Alex. Um, it's so fun to be here. This is our first official meeting of, of this event. And we're gonna have a few of these steering committee meetings before the 
official launch or when we do the selection of the panelists on October 30th. So um, welcome everyone. And um, I'm just gonna go over a little bit, a little bit of the background of this piece of the public engagement plan, basically, that is our sort of our piece. Um, so a little bit of background on us. We're a nonpartisan nonprofit um, based in Portland, Oregon. We've been around for about 12 years. Actually, we started in, uh, we're started by a couple of U of O grads in Eugene. Our first office was there. And uh, we were started to do something called the Citizens Initiative Review, which you might have heard of. It's um, a really landmark uh, reform at the state level in Oregon, where uh, everyday voters from across the state um, gather uh, before an election and review one or two of the ballot measures in that election, listen to both campaigns, listen to a bunch of outside experts, and produce a page of voter information that goes into the voters pamphlet. It was one of the first um, innovations of its kind in uh, institutionalized into a government in, in the world, in fact, and, and of its kind, I mean a review panel, uh, what we're now calling a review panel, um, called sometimes a citizen jury or a citizen's assembly on a bigger scale. Um, these are panels that are selected by uh, uh, what is now being called a democratic lottery. They're, they're randomly selected from the general public and but demographically stratified to represent a, 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 a whatever area, the state or the city that the, the thing is taking place in. Um, they also, the sort of the other piece of them that's unique is their highly kind of uh, deliberative structure within the panel itself and this kind of research and evaluation basis um, and uh, yeah, sort of the, the amount of kind of um, technical work done on the, on the process. Um, so part of that uh, sort of trying to create a better democratic processes includes you, um, you're sort of the, the meta democratic process uh, outside of the panel to, uh, to provide some advice on key questions before the panel even gets started. So uh, I want to, uh, first let you know that we have a page that sort of outlines some of the details of the event. I'm not gonna go into all of them for the sake of time, but uh, it's just healthydemocracy.org slash Eugene. And you can see at the very top, there's a button so that people who got the letter who uh, were randomly selected, there were first 7,500 folks who were sent a letter. And if they got the letter and they think they might want to participate, they can come here and click the link. Um, their envelope looked like that. A little bit further down in the document section, there's actually a copy of the letter they got. So you can look at that if you want to see what folks, what folks got. They can reply by mail as well. Uh, some of the, there's a, there's a link to the, the city's page here. Um, and then some of the details here. It's 30 people from across Eugene and within the Eugene uh, UGB. Um, a, a, a microcosm of the city, uh, reflective of the city in terms of a number of factors, age, gender, location of residence, race and ethnicity, educational attainment, experience of a disability and renter or home ownership uh, status. Um, they'll then deliberate in over the course of um, nine sessions here in November, December, and then five sessions in early 2021. Uh, they're paid, um, in this case, $560 for their 35 total hours of service. That's about a little over $16 an hour. Um, and they receive a lot of support, technical support, um, so that anyone can participate regardless of what their technology situation is at home and, um, and sort of personal concierge kind of support uh, throughout the process. So that everyone feels comfortable after all, um, by its very nature, these are folks who um, for the most part have not participated in anything like this before. Um, so we wanna make sure everybody feels really comfortable. A couple of the key dates, as I mentioned, the, the selection of panelists will happen on October 30th um, on, in an online event. Uh, one of the one of the core principles here is transparency. So this meeting and all meetings in plenary of the of the uh, panel itself, that is in the full group, uh, will happen in public. Um, when they're in small groups, that doesn't happen in public uh, because we feel that that would really get in the way of kind of candid conversations in small group settings. But all that stuff comes back to public full group settings, um, just not necessarily attributed to the person that said them. Uh, in, then the panel starts on November 10th and runs Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays for four weeks, but misses some days. Um, it misses the second Thursday and the Thursday and Saturday on the third week because of Thanksgiving. Um, so anyway, all the details are there. 
Uh, they're all, as I mentioned, open to the public. They'll be live streamed and recorded. So you can, you can step in and, and watch them and would encourage you to do so. Um, we'll talk about that later. Just wanted to introduce you to the rest of the stuff on this page. As I mentioned, there's the panelist recruitment letter. Here's our contract with the city, which in the interest of transparency is public and has a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna be referring to in a second. There will be a bunch of videos associated with the project, sort of explainer videos up front, interviews with different people involved to, so that the community can get a sense of what this new kind of process looks like. Um, and, and then press releases will be posted here as well. All right, now I've done this a little bit, uh, I've just realized out of the order that, that uh, Alex and I talked about yesterday, but that's all right. <laughs> We're gonna take a step back and talk about principles for these kind of processes in general, Eugene or the many other ones that we've done across the US and, and now in Europe. Um, and we're not the only organization that, that, uh, that does these either. Um, so uh, one of the, so to start off, the sort of first and most basic principle, and by the way, I'm reading straight from an addendum to our contract with the city. So you can go back and look at this in that document um, if you'd like in a lot more detail than I'm gonna cover here. But one of the core principles and, and differentiators of this type of thing is that it shifts the paradigm of public engagement where panelists are not, are not uh, uh, or, or everyday folks are not, uh, are not people to sort of get information from or to give information to, but are a, an essential part of the process and in fact in a position of power within their own process. So they are on the dais of this, of this panel. Um, and we are, we are, as uh, I think Terry mentioned, we are but support, Sophie maybe, but support staff to support the panel. And so everything is sort of through that lens. Um, and likewise, um, uh, this steering committee actually is the only part that's maybe a little bit um, sort of on a similar level to the panel uh, because you'll be deciding a few things up front uh, for the panel's first week of work. But uh, there will also be a couple of panelists joining the steering committee later. So there's, there's sort of cross uh, interaction there. Um, and there's limited, uh, so, you know, there are things that the panel will have control over that the steering committee won't. Uh, so I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so, uh, right, so these are not just focus groups. Um, they're more something like a fact-finding commission, task force, whatever you want to call it, advisory board. Um, there is... Uh, all kinds of notifications. Uh, and one of the other core principles is that they have a direct path to decision makers. So real potential influence over public policy, in this case, giving advice directly to the city staff who are, who are gonna be writing the guidelines and then reviewing the guidelines in a couple waves of feedback in the spring. Um, there's a strong emphasis on collaborative decision-making as there will be in this group as well, uh, working towards shared solutions, but not forcing consensus. Um, they are uh, meant to be accountable and transparent. Uh, and that applies to the sort of overall governance over the process. That's your role here. You're responsible for making key high level decisions, um, not just us, you know, in a room somewhere or right now in my living room. Uh, that, that, that doesn't look like transparent and accountable governance. And we need that over this process as much as in, in the larger world. Um, they need to be independent of outside political influence. And you'll see that if you read some of the details of this contract, there are stipulations built in there that protect um, us and the process from there's some separation. Um, one of the core sort of separations that you'll probably hear me talk about a lot is the separation between process and content. Um, you're gonna be sort of one of the only folks stepping over that line doing both. Today, we're gonna just talk about con uh, process, sorry not content at all. We're not gonna talk about housing or anything related to it. That'll happen later um, in a week from now. Uh, but today it's all about just the process that will be, the panel will be going through, which should be agnostic to the topic at hand. At least that's how we design them. Um, and um, yeah. So uh, 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 the next thing is something I've already talked about, random and representative selection of the panelists to bring a broad uh, new voices into the room. That's the first priority. And a broad diversity is representative of the, the demographic and political factors in, in, a, in um, a particular place. Um, in this case, uh, the city's decided that a few of those factors will be based on um, the K-12 population in light of this being a long-term kind of planning project, but that's only really feasible for a few of the factors. Um, the other factors will come from the census. Just a three-minute uh, warning, Lynn. 
Perfect. Thanks. Um, the, these processes are characterized by sort of uh, uh, iterative phases. The first phase being a substantial information gathering phase um, that includes stuff provided by the city, experts and stakeholders selected by you, um, experts and stakeholders selected by the panel itself based on a menu that's been passed through this committee and uh, potential other public input uh, yet to be determined perhaps for this process. Not sure if that's gonna be in this process. Um, it then goes into a structured in-depth deliberation phase where the panelists, and this is all still in sort of the fact-finding mode, um, the, the um, sort of non-judgmental non mode where the panelists are still um, as hopefully almost always throughout the process on the same side of the metaphorical table, looking at the problem on the opposite side rather than our sort of traditional paradigm, which is two opposing sides looking at each other across the table. Um, so that, that deliberation phase is for them to sort of sort of pour through the information that they've received. And one of the other pieces, core pieces of information here is the information that they bring themselves. This is a cross section of Eugene and therefore they have a lot of lived experience, which is uh, in most cases equally valuable to um, the information they're getting from outside. Um, particular when talking about sort of big picture values decisions like these principles that they're going to be uh, talking we'll talk about sort of what they're going to be producing in a later section of the meeting today. Um, and then an actual, you know, an actionable final report in this case is going to be in kind of a couple different pieces and uh, third party evaluation. I'm going to skip to another part of the document here to just talk about your role a little bit. I'm not going to, I'm going to skip that section actually. Um, you can look at what makes it, what differentiates it from other types of processes like this. The steering committee, uh, your role is going to be to provide oversight of the uh, overall process structure and fairness. We're going to talk about that today. Um, not related to the content of the panel's work, just the process itself. Um, your job is also to um, be a bit of a cheerleader, we hope, uh, to elevate and amplify the public stature of the, of the review panel. We hope that You'll be invested in its success like we are. Um, and uh, yeah, this represents a tangible buy-in from key interest groups across the city. At least that's what we hope for. Uh, you'll also make several key decisions. Um, and it says here very candidly, so as to remove liability from us or the city or anybody else. And, and that's sort of said in a bit of a negative way, but it really, it, it, it is for a, a very positive democratic reason, which is we should not be making those decisions. Um, it, it should really be, um, a, a little bit broader group of stakeholders and as much as possible the panel itself. Um, and you're also here to act as um, a court of last resort for complaints or other things about the process as we get further on into the process if there are such things. Um, I think I've actually already covered that one. Um, you can read more about the steering committee's role and I would encourage you to do so if you read one thing after this meeting, it's to look at Appendix C of that contract. Um, it looks like it's uh, it's almost to the very end, second to last page of the document. Um, it's sort of, oh, again, what I've just said in terms of the sort of high level process decisions, uh, process and content decisions. You'll be making decisions about the key um, uh, presenters who will come to the panel in its first week. And also, um, as I said, with assistance from uh, our partners at the National Policy Consensus Center here at PSU, who will sort of be helping you out with, with suggestions, um, forming a menu of stakeholders and experts that the panel themselves will choose from um, in its second week. And see the composition of the committee there and a few other details about it. I think that's all I need to say right now. Um, does that sound about right, Alex? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, super. Um, that's great. And I think that's a, a perfect time to jump into some questions and um, discussion for a few minutes after that information dump. <laughs> so I will do my best to kind of uh, keep stack here, but shouldn't be hard in this group. Um, anyone have a question for any of any of these presenters? Okay. <laughs> that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, yeah. uh, that'll help us get into the, uh, feel free to send questions to me later though, um, about, yeah. about our section of this anyway. Actually, Alex, yeah, go ahead. I have a question. This is Karen. Karen. Um, uh, Lynn, you just shared, you know, those 
pages of overview of our responsibilities and the purpose of this steering committee. And I, am I understanding you correctly that also this steering committee and this format, this process that we're undertaking is the first time that Healthy Democracy has done this kind of a process um, mm -hmm. just in general, that that's a, is that, am I, do I have that correct? Am I tracking the right pieces? Yes, I, yes, it, well, it depends. You know, we've been using sort of, this is the first of its kind, which it is. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we've been doing this for 12 years in very similar formats. So, and we have had steering committees for those processes as well. At the state level, there's an institutionalized steering committee called the CIR Commission that's partially governor appointed um, state commission that oversees the CIR process that serves a role very much like what you're serving here. So um, the, the part of this, um, and I'll maybe ask a couple of questions peppered together that are really one big question about our role and the need that you have for this steering committee's input. Um, so the part of this that is new, that's never been done before, what is that part? Sure, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that part is the fact that this kind of lottery selected review panel um, is part of a substantial planning process at the city level. So the that's part that is, that is really, and I am thinking it's probably blended in my mind because I read through that material outreach to the, um, to the community and um, so that makes sense. So the steering committee structure and our engagement is not new um, and never been done before. It's really that other outreach component and engaging a demographically representative cross section of the community to help advance our, our conversation. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, in many ways. Yes, this is sort of a, in some ways, a traditional kind of stakeholder uh, uh, committee that we formed here as oversight to the really unique part, which is the lottery selected kind of panel. Um, and, but that said, you know, these processes, um, you know, sometimes are questioned for, you know, are these, these are just random people and, and they're not necessarily the folks who've been involved for a long time. Mm -hmm. And what we say to that is, yes, that's true. And that's part of their, what makes them really different. And also they completely depend on, on sort of an evidence basis and outside uh, sort of stakeholder input. That's, they're just kind of the, the, the you know, quote unquote outside arbiters of mm. that stuff. But all those inputs are as essential as they are ever in any other project. And it should be said that the other parts of the public engagement project sort of hit um, you know, the existing boards and commissions and equity panel um, in, in, in ways that kind of complement this, this approach, I think. And our meetings are early and are these first four that we have on the calendar, but in that, what you described about being the only participant that's sort of blurring the bounds between process and content, does that mean that we also continue along in the process in a um, beyond, you know, just sort of being in the periphery and come back, we'll come back again after these first four conversations, okay. Absolutely. Yes. In fact, um, I believe at the end of the meeting, Alex is going to talk about um, the scheduling for future meetings. So these are just the four introductory ones, which is sort of the core of your of your kind of process content work right now, because we have to get the thing launched, of course, and, and there's a lot of decisions to be made before that. Um, but then during the process itself, there'll be a, what, Alex, a couple of meetings, I think, and then one after this first um, set of sessions. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. And I can go into, into dates. I know there's some figuring out to do still for the meetings during the panel um, that we want to consult you all on, but that's that's generally what, we ha what we're thinking. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Great, any other questions? Perfect. Okay, so I am, we're doing great on time. I'm gonna share my screen now um, and just have a little conversation about um, working agreements as a group. Okay. Um, so Lynn and I, you know, we're thinking that um, <laughs> we often do quite an elaborate process for developing working agreements um, with the panelists. I think this group um, probably doesn't need quite as much direction, but it still, I think, is is good practice to have a conversation, you know, at the beginning of our work together about how we intend to be together and um, some some agreements to uh, to act accordingly. 
Um, so I'm just going to present these. These are some suggestions, and then we'll open it up for conversation to make, you know, additions, revisions, modifications, um, and then and then agree to them. I know that not all of us are here today, um, so I assume Lynn and I can do some liaising with the folks who who are missing um, to make sure they agree to them as well. Um, so first of all, just using respectful verbal and nonverbal language with a particular um, eye towards how, how those things come across in Zoom, uh, minimize distracting behavior, attend all scheduled meetings um, as much as possible, be open to new ideas and information. So avoid making uh, conclusions until you've heard and thoroughly considered all of the available information, which kind of goes for all of, all of these processes. Uh, listen with care and assume good intent. Um, so we're just as the panel does, making a genuine effort to understand each other's perspectives. Um, keep focused on the issue at hand. Um, and that goes along with the next, which is speaking clearly, briefly, sharing airtime, um, and just really keeping in mind that we have super limited time together, these one hour meetings, which will fly by, especially prior to the panel launching. And we have a lot of work to do together. Um, disagreeing positively, so kind of like Lynn was saying, the metaphorical table, staying on the same side of everybody's uh, task at hand and main goal is to help this process function well. Um, so directing energy towards the issues and not people. Being a problem solver, suggesting alternative approaches or solutions. And this last one, um, having humility, contributing in, in good faith. This is a new kind of process for many of us. So just bearing that in mind as we as we get to know each other and get to do this work together. Um, so those are some proposals. This is not set in stone, um, but I'm curious if anybody has additions, revisions that they they care to add, and I can edit these in real time. <laughs> cool. I see a thumbs up. Yeah. Also, feel free to give me a thumbs up, thumbs medium, thumbs down. Alex, I just have a question about Zoom protocol. Um, we mm -hmm. have had, uh, we've opened our city council meetings with sort of a script about Zoom protocol. And so somewhere in there, kind of what we're agreeing to do in this digital format. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is there is there language off the top of your head that you'd like me to add? I, I realized that was kind of an omission here. I, I think we'd have to gather it and get it back to you, but something about them being public meetings and then um, I'm not, not just written down, but I believe what they say verbally is, or that what we agree to do ahead of the meeting is to keep our cameras on, try to do that. Um, if at all possible, what else? Sophie, are you remembering anything else? When there's something speaking. Sorry, Ed. Oh, sorry, do you want to, uh, say your piece, Sophie, and then we'll go to Ed. I, yeah, I think I usually hear something about remaining on mute unless you're speaking. Mm -hmm. There's also something about don't use chat because of the public record. Mm. So I'm, I'm just going to add these kind of specific pieces we're bringing up now. Um, and then Terry, if you wanna um, email me with a, a list, then we can come back and just approve that next week. Um, but I think those two make sense. Does anyone have comments on those two that were just proposed? Okay, great. So we can do the official thumbs up um, next week after we've filled that out with some Zoom protocol and hopefully when everyone will have the chance to be here. Um, but just for now, can we do another thumbs up, thumbs sideways, the kind of straw poll? Okay, excellent. Thank you all. And this is terrific because we have plenty of time to talk about the process, which is why we're all here. So I'm gonna pass it back to Lynn and we're <laughs> We're doing this uh, this dance of passing the screen share back and forth. <laughs> Often feels like what we do in our panel processes too. Um, and Lynn, I think we'll share the kind of nuts and bolts of what we have down so far. 
and want your feedback on. Yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, it should be said that uh, that I've asked Alex to sort of facilitate these meetings and and so that I can kind of just be a participant. Um, of course, I'll also be a presenter quite a bit because um, I'm especially at this beginning of anything to do with process because uh, I'm, I'm sort of will be introducing a lot of the process um, ideas and suggestions and asking for your feedback on them and later approval on some main process points. And just to be clear off the bat, um, the way you'll see it structured in, in this sort of official uh, addenda to the contract is that this group has final say over sort of the major elements of the process, um, but not final say over sort of the, the minutia of the process, sort of like a, a board and, and a staff at, a, at an organization. The board has control over sort of the, the general direction the staff is then responsible for implementing it. So that's kind of our relationship here. Um, so with that in mind, I'm coming to you today with sort of an, a general overview of the process um, that I'd like, we won't be making any decision on it today, but um, I'd like your feedback on. And we can go back and forth, talk about questions, comments, concerns. Um, uh, I can tell you more detail about any part that you're interested in. Um, and, uh, and then we'll come back to it again next time in addition to coming back uh, with you for, uh, for talking about the sort of presenters who will come to the panel in its first week. So the goals of the first part of the process, and it's sort of split into two parts, this part in November, December, and then the second part in, um, in early 2021, dates yet to be determined. Um, and I don't know whether I, I think I mentioned this before, that the first part is, um, is all about creating these sort of shared principles and values that the city staff and technical staff will take and use to write their uh, code language to, to um, comply with HB 2001. And then they'll come back with that code language to the panel in, in early 2021. The panel will say, you know, how it matches up with their principles and what kind of comments they have. And then the panel will actually come back again um, and give comments on additional revisions. So there's sort of a, a couple steps there in the early spring. So uh, for this first uh, part, that is November, December, the panel will come together around a common purpose. There's, you know, we'll sort of build community around this as a common purpose, um, uh, uh, advising the city on, on how to um, implement or how to comply with HB 2001 and understanding this quite complex issue. Um, and by the end of these first nine sessions, the panel will have crafted principles to advise the city and technical staff. So this is sort of happening in three phases in part one here. And I guess I don't need to move. Uh, the first phase, we sort of broken it up in sessions in, in sort of blocks of three sessions. And each of these is about, uh, well, the session's about two and a half hours. So that's about seven and a half hours per phase. So the first phase, sessions one through three, November 10th, 12th, 14th, will be sort of a weaving together of background information and storytelling, uh, which we may have a different word for. Essentially, this is information coming from outside the panel and information that already exists on the panel or experience and expertise um, that already exists on the panel. So, but there's a bunch of introductory stuff that has to happen first, including just sort of an understanding of what exactly the, the charge of the panel is and what their, uh, what their final deliverable is at the end of this first section. Um, and uh, some sort of familiarity with how these kind of processes work. As I mentioned, these are um, environments that most of us are not um, sort of uh, able to be in. Uh, we hope that they, that they'll become much more common, but this kind of um, uh, collaborative oriented uh, space that is, you know, from the outset, a cross section, which means there are people there that are not like you in a whole bunch of different ways, and you know that from the beginning, um, which can provide, which can can um, introduce a level of sort of trepidation and among among panelists. I know it certainly would for me, um, and so there's sort of um, there's sort of a need for the panel to kind of coalesce around its mission. Um, but very quickly, the panel will get some background information from outside of the panel, um, and I should say in in our sort of separation between content and process, um, Alex and I, who will be kind of in front of the room for the full group sessions of the panel, will not be presenting anything to do with content. 
ever. We are the process folks and only ever the process folks. Um, we will depend on outside resources, technical staff from the city or folks who this panel, this committee has selected to uh, provide any of the content, you know, what is zoning, what is HB 2001, what is, you know, all that kind of stuff. What is the history of housing in Eugene, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever the things are that you decide are important um, to cover. And, um, and as I mentioned in that first phase, they'll be preloaded by the steering committee. Uh, the panelists will also be bringing their lived experience, which is a very important part of this process. It really puts, as I said, panelists on the dais and they are, um, you know, they're reflective of the city on a whole bunch of different factors um, that, uh, that even outside experts and, and certainly not us, the organizers are. Uh, they are they are sort of the ones that that are bringing this kind of uh, that kind of outside um, lived experience but also in many cases expertise um, it's a it's a group of 30 folks there are going to be folks on there who know who know something about this topic or have you know who are landlords or uh, you know who live in subsidized housing or have all the different kinds of very um, in-depth personal experiences um, and, and then at the end of this phase, once the panelists sort of had a chance to dig in a little bit to the issue um, and to their own uh, kind of experience with the issue over time, they'll then uh, call their own witnesses. Um, I'm sorry, that word is actually been, been, been changed. We're not using that word, presenters, what that should say, for the next three sessions uh, in the following week. Um, and this will be from a, a menu that will have, uh, uh, with help from, as I mentioned, our um, sort of partners at uh, National Policy Consensus Center, who've done this since the beginning of the CIR for, for CIR panels and the CIR Commission going back a decade, uh, will also be helping you to uh, craft that, that list of experts. And there'll be or, uh, I should say experts and stakeholders at that point. So, um, so the idea here is that the first week will be very much background information. Um, folks uh, not dipping into sort of some the values questions of the issue yet, but just like, let's get the panel up to speed on, on what you need to know to become as much of, uh, you know, sort of get, get the core background in about three to four hours of, of their total time in that seven and a half hours in the first week, about half of that will be spent um, getting information probably from outside sources. So that's a lot of time, but also not a lot of time to get up to speed on a very complex issue. Um, and then going into the second phase, which will uh, probably include more kind of background information um, as the panel desires, but also um, that menu will need to include um, perspectives um, from different uh, diverse array of stakeholders. Um, and, uh, and yeah, they'll need to hear from at least as diverse array of stakeholders as exist on this committee, but um, hopefully a much broader diversity of stakeholders on, on sort of panels of speakers that following week. And that'll still be intermixed with um, their own reflection on what they're learning, lots of time for that, of course, um, and, and exploring uh, and how it relates to their own experience and the people that they have contact with in their lives and each other, importantly. Um, they're sort of at this point still um, acting, you know, not making any decisions yet, I suppose, except for calling the uh, calling the presenters, um, but just they're on the same side of the table and what's on the opposite side is just understanding what this world looks like. Then at the, toward the end of that phase, they'll start to identify um, potential principles um, and which will naturally, to some extent, come out of this process and I'll explain how in just a second. And then the, the last week or the last phase, I should say, will um, not have, you know, sort of all this information dump, but we'll have time for just the panelists to do their work, their deliberative work to um, sort of put the ideas together that will form these principles and make them into sort of a cohesive, concise form that the city can use and, and, the, and the staffers who are, who are doing the technical work can use in their work. Um, and uh, and, and not just the, the sort of recommendations themselves, uh, the principles in this case, but rationales for why, importantly, and, um, and also a, a, a prioritization of those principles. 
So as I mentioned, this is not a consensus-based process, but it is a as close to consensus as possible, but with plenty of room for minority opinions. And that's absolutely vital. Nothing is thrown out. Um, so the, the staff will be able to see, oh, okay, this thing only got 30% maybe support in the end, but it was really important to those people for this reason. And that that is an important thing to include in, in uh, any of this, um, any of these kind of final reports. And importantly, um, the panelists will be writing this themselves. This does not get passed through staff, either our staff or the city staff. Every single word is the panelist's word uh, without editing themselves. Um, one more thing I have to mention here. Um, uh, sorry, this is taking a little bit longer, Alex, than I predicted, but um, we'll have more time to go over this next time as well. Um, that uh, the, I'm not gonna talk about part two again, uh, yet, but there's a couple of features, uh, one of which is sort of uh, base camps, we're calling them, which is places for the panelists to get together themselves and um, have time to just kind of get to know each other, to substitute for the fact that that's hard to do over Zoom. And the second thing are these sort of task-based subcommittees where the panelists will be their own support staff to some extent, um, doing their own record keeping, identifying themes, um, and putting those themes together to sort of that sort of building blocks of the principles, and then actually doing the drafting and wordsmithing. Of course, these subcommittees working with the entire panel and bringing and everything being approved by the, by, by the uh, uh, well, at least as much of the panel as possible. Uh, also a process oversight group, which will um, have members that will be on this committee and community liaisons to come outside the process. Okay, so I'll stop there. Any, um, let's, let's open it to, to sort of questions, comments, concerns. Um, and then, as I said, we'll have more time next time as well. I'd just like to know, what is the benefit of your proposed process? Right. Well, it's um, it, it's a fairly uh, I, should, I guess on a on a I don't know how I answer that exactly. I guess one of the one of the one of the core features here um, is that the panel is spending quite a lot of time in phases one and two with um, uh, sort of uh, information gathering um, and and really coming at the thing from a learning mindset rather than jumping into um, kind of normative politics um, and I, that's really important to sort of build camaraderie on the panel but also um, is really important for all of us as we come to decisions of course having good information first um, so that's sort of one of the key principles um, other benefits um, any 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 more specific sort of concerns or questions heather no it just it just seems like a very uh very deliberate and i wondered what the Oh, got it. Yes, uh, yes. So these, the, this kind of progression is um, sort of one that has come from now years of work across the world in this kind of process, and it's fairly, uh, I mean, a fairly standard process that doesn't belong just to this world of sort of deliberative lottery-based stuff, of course. Um, but yeah, it is quite deliberate, and you'll see as we start to present sort of the full agendas that they get very detailed. Um, but to leave enough time for the panelists to, to digest and reflect. That's absolutely important, building that in as structured as time. Um, but, um, you know, we also have limited time and are trying to do, you know, get folks uh, or, uh, you know, folks on the panel are, are getting up to speed on quite a complex topic. So it, it has to be fairly efficient as well. And could you stop sharing so that we can see everybody's hands? I see Ed with his hand up. Yes, thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, as a result of 2001, I'm curious as to how much flexibility or wiggle room we really have in drafting the new code. That's a Terry and Sophie question, I think. Yeah, it's a great question and one that we thought real hard about whether um, this would be a good first project to bring this kind of model to Eugene. And as you know, things have changed with House Bill 2001 since it was first drafted and, and, and passed to the point where the city's wiggle room has gotten smaller. Um, that said, <laughs> um, 
City staff believe that part of the benefit of this is in its unique way of bringing together stakeholders from all parts of the city that are chosen in the way that they are through healthy democracy. So it's a, a benefit to representation and who is invited and actually compensated in this case to add their voice to a project. So I think one of the biggest benefits will be educational and raising awareness and adding voices to a public policy issue. If I can add one thing to that really fast, the thing that I kind of glossed over when I didn't mention the second part in the spring is that it will have more sort of reflection from the panel on what they've been through and worked on and how that might impact future public engagement recommendations as well. Great, thank you. And I see Karen's hand. Yeah, uh, one, or maybe their, their question, question slash suggestion. Um, one is that uh, in describing our input on framing the process and, and based on the question that just came up about you know the bookends that exist that our local compliance with House Bill 2001 needs to fit in between, that it seems like in that early um, those very earliest conversations with um, participants in the in the deliberative panel, that for them to have a really clear understanding of the project parameters, which are absolutely set, <laughs> um, that that will really help, I think, for them to be able to engage in a way that is more um, respectful of their time and productive. That said, the content to understand, to be able to conceptualize those bookends is fairly technical. Um, if you've not you know, read zoning code or thought a lot about housing development or housing typologies, um, even that term I just use, housing types, housing typologies, like not common language. And I, I think that there could be a challenge in getting up to speed within just you know, three to six hours time even what you would choose to introduce in three to six hours time. And I'm, I'm thinking of some you know, recent processes that we have um, had and you know, that have led to productive ends, but that were you know, three hour blocks at a time over four months to get to less technical understanding than what will be needed from those first three meetings. So just a thought that um, that you know, will be important to spend some time thinking about um, and the parameters piece, you know, we do um, we do ourselves a disservice when we engage around community process, where the um, where the where people are given the impression they have influence that they don't have, mm -hmm. you know, different points in the process. And I think for for this moment in time for our community, and you know, and especially given like you know, this could be a really great um, model that understanding that we're not asking you know for this world to to write house bill 2001 and create the work that dlc has already done it's much 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 finer grain than that um so. thank you karen yeah lynn do you lynn or terry do you want to respond to that briefly sure i, I don't think i need ahead, to um <laughs> i I, I saw a lot of nodding. <laughs> I guess the only thing I'll say is that, is that uh, yes, absolutely. It is, it, you know, it looks like very tight timing. The panelists will feel like it's tight timing. And all I can say is we've been there before. This happens for the Citizens Initiative Review, for example, where they have only in that case, four full days to learn about an issue as complex as, um, corporate tax law at the state level, or I don't know, casinos or GMOs or any, a number of very complex, uh, much more expansive topics. Um, and do they become, you know, the world's experts on those topics? Of course not, none of us would, but, um, but they, uh, panelists uh, really, uh, you know, given this kind of architecture, um, tend to take their work really seriously and, and take in information and, and digest information at, uh, at a rate that I think we would all be uh, very impressed with ourselves doing. Um, 
I think actually those longer sessions could be of benefit for what we're, but that's a great point. Yeah. Um, great, and I'm mindful that we have three minutes left um, and we wanna do some scheduling pieces, but Carolyn, do you think you could make your uh, comment <laughs> quick? <laughs> Is that possible? Right. Okay, so what's the kind of a follow-up about parameters um, from Karin's statement about parameters? Um, just clarify for all of us right now, I mean, all cities had a choice between just using the minimum set by the LCD, minimum code standards, and then writing the rest or adopting the model code. Is it true? It appears that um, Eugene has decided to go with just the minimal and then write the rest of the, or adopt the rest of their code to be in compliance? That's correct. That's our approach and we're, we're, we've begun the work with a consultant team um, to start that right. work. Right. Yeah, no, and that I find even more amazing talking about parameters is that based on your fact sheet, there's so few areas that the city really will have flexibility around, you know, which code they, how they write the code and you're already working with someone. So it seems like there's even less and less work for our 30 member panel to indulge in, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was a realization as Terry mentioned in, in the sort of course of, of planning for this project. Hence also this sort of secondary charge to the panel of identifying um, uh, it's sort of using its, its um, growing public engagement kind of expertise through throughout the process to sort of make recommendations on that front as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, thank you all. Um, and actually Car Karin's second point kind of segues perfectly into this um, next steps piece. And so next week, next Thursday at the same time, we'll be um, digging in much deeper to that kind of first week of preloaded experts. And so we'll be leaning pretty, pretty heavily on you all to help curate who those experts are and kind of what background information the panel needs to do its work without, without overwhelming them. Um, so anticipate that next week and we'll have more process details for you um, as well next week. And then kind of in terms of big picture scheduling, we've got four Thursday meetings on the calendar now. So that brings us up till November 12th, which is two days after the panel will have gathered for the first time. Um, so that'll be exciting. And then Lynn and I were talking yesterday and we would love to convene the steering committee at least twice throughout the course of the panel. And so I'm just gonna put a couple dates out there right now. There's a Thursday that's Thanksgiving in there, which makes scheduling awkward. Um, but we were thinking uh, the 23rd, which is I believe the Monday, the week of Thanksgiving, and then uh, December 3rd. And I believe that's again a Thursday, same time. Um, so we can confirm those uh, in email or next week, just to put those on people's radar. And then want to plan for at least one kind of debrief um, on the 10th of, of December um, that can kind of help us gear up for, for part two of the process in, in 2021. Um, so with that, thank you all so much and uh, we'll see you next Thursday. And um, I'm, I'm happy to hang out for a couple minutes if there's any further discussion, but thank you all so much. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Alex, um, I have, well, and this is, is thinking about our process and Lynn, I think maybe as well for you that um, I think one, one thought that comes to mind is that that question that Heather asked um, about what is the benefit of this additional layer of process that we're adding uh, is one that is going to come up again, and I would be prepared to to be met with skepticism. So have have like a, a really clear um, kind of series of of bullets as to why it is that we are doing this the way that we're doing it. And one thing that didn't come up today is that we have not seen representative engagement in our processes, which I think is the fundamental reason for doing 
this kind of panel. And I think that that is something that as just a foundation, like a cornerstone to this conversation would be helpful to people. Um, we in our community, I think deal with a lot of fatigue around process that uses all the energy and all the time and all of the funding and then no outcomes. And that it degrades then future faith and process. So I say all this because I'm, I'm um, wanting very much for this process to succeed and to you know, go forward and um, have more people in our community thinking about being engaged regularly in our decision-making. Um, and I think that those, those questions that came up and those issues I just described will, will return. So just something to keep in mind as you're framing uh, our conversations. That's a great point. I may have skipped over the why a little bit, which is what she was identifying and, and thinking about the process specifically. And, and maybe you should go back to that a little bit. So thanks. It'd, it'd be easy to miss with yeah. so many other layers that- <laughs> You get deep into it and then you're like, why? Oh, right, oh, right, that's right. Why we do this? <laughs> I just cool, want thanks. to add, add those two cents and uh, I will, I'll talk with you all or see you all next week. All right, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Great. Okay. Any other pieces before we all hop off? I think so. Cool. All right. Okay. <laughs> Ken, Ken, did you have a question? I, I don't, I don't, I probably have a lot of questions. I was going to let this go for a couple of meetings and so we get a good feel for what you all are doing and then be able to ask the questions. I just, as a quick comment, I, and maybe Terry and Sophie have heard some of this. I, when I listen to the questions about the benefit, I find myself, um, I mean, I kind of concur with those questions or that they're important. Um, I, it, feels to me like it's important for you all to help us understand how this fits in. And I, it can maybe be done briefly, but how it fits into the overall project. I mean, there is a project, there's, a, there's an effort here that by uh, June of 2022, we're, the city staff is ready to bring to the council uh, recommendations to implement HB 2001. And this is part of public involvement work to be sure that we've really gotten a good sense of what the community thinks about this and what kind of input they have and so on. This representative effort, if you will, kind of like that term, I know it's new, but it's an idea it, for me, at least in part, we're going out to find people in the community or give people a chance who might not normally participate in this kind of thing. And then to take a representative snapshot of the community and engage them, educate them and have them provide input. I, having said all that, I, it seems to me there's, there are in fact constituencies or stakeholders or individuals who might not be captured, not the greatest word, but not, might not you know, end up as part of this who are going to want to participate and going to have input to provide that's going to be necessary to successful completion of this implementation package. So if that kind of makes sense, I find myself kind of thinking there's a public involvement process. This is an important piece of it, but it's not, it's not public involvement in its entirety. And I, and so I've, I've heard about this a couple of times and I just find myself wondering as we go through the next year and a half about opportunities for engagement for uh, the other constituencies, maybe people who, you know, you know, maybe will have something to say at the end who might not participate while it's going on and, and so on. So mm -hmm. I think just kind of a question and understanding how this fits into the overall public involvement process to make this a successful implementation project at the end. Yeah, and so maybe that's something that we could dive into a little bit more next week is that um, document that you, that's on the website, right, Sophie, about how the, all the public in involvement pieces fit together for this project? Yes, it's in our fact sheet, one of our fact sheets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank okay. you, Ken. I appreciate your comments and um, and agree. We'll 
look for the best place to dig into that a little deeper at the next meeting. But as you okay. know, there's lots of places um, to have these conversations and hopefully room for all stakeholders who want to be involved in one way or another. Well, I, I know that there is. And I also am I'm, I'm being really sensitive to the fact I think that this is the steering committee for this panel and for this part of the process. So I want to stay yeah. focused on that and I don't want to divert it too much. So, all right. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks much. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Bye. Thanks everybody. Take Great care. Time. Bye.